Well, I'd like to give everyone in Hope Hall a warm welcome to the meeting this afternoon. And if you're watching online as well, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to read uh, from the book of Acts, please, and chapter number 26. Two verses from the book of Acts, chapter 26. Uh, while you're looking it up, just to give you where we are, we're in a courtroom. Uh, the Apostle Paul is arguing um, a, a, his own defense um, for preaching the gospel, for telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's on his way to Rome, and in Rome he's going to uh, face Caesar, and he's going ultimately to lose his life um, as, as, as the story goes on. He's standing before a man called Agrippa. And he's getting the opportunity to give and put his case to Agrippa. And we're going to break into the story just towards the end of it in verse number 28. As Paul has spoken about his life up to now, everything that has happened to him. He says, uh, we get to verse 28, and Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. We trust that God will help us as we look at his word together. Jake said to me during the week, I've got to give a personal talk at school. It's his first one at high school. And I said, what are you going to speak about? And, well, I think anyone that knows Jake that spent more than three or four minutes in Jake's company would know that it was going to be something about football. And he decided that it was going to be his birthday present from last year, which was a tour of Old Trafford. You know, when every personal talk that you ever see as a teacher is about, from a boy is about football, it must just be so boring. And I said to Jake, you maybe want to rethink it. Think of another memorable day. And he decided he's going to speak about his first day at Greif and what it was like for him just going to a new school and, and learning new rules and learning about a new school and meeting new people and, and a completely different structure of learning. And he's going to speak about that. I suppose if I was going to look back and look for a memorable occasion that happened to me, I do remember, and if you haven't heard this story, you've not been listening for very long, I was in the Clydesdale Bank when I was about 18, and two masked men came in with sawn-off shotguns and robbed the bank, and it was quite a memorable occasion, and it gave me something to talk about for a very long time. But then I remember at the age of 18, it was about the same sort of time, going to a birthday party down in Ayrshire, and looking across a crowded room, and eyes locking with... Well, she thought I was pretty wonderful, and, and I suppose I did too, and I met Linda. I will never forget that day. Of course, uh, a few years later, I plucked up, I never asked her out that night. It took me nearly five years to do that. But I remember being married to her. I'll never forget the day that Jessica was born and that Jake was born. The Apostle Paul had a memorable life. In 2 Corinthians, he would speak about being in prison. He would speak about being beaten often, even to the point of death. He would speak about being stoned with stones to put him to death. He was shipwrecked three times. He was a night and a day in the middle of the sea, clinging to a bit of driftwood. In constant danger in travel from injury, from robbery, from whatever else. He was often hungry. He was often cold. And he suffered from exposure. And all of these travels that you can read about in the book of the Acts were all memorable. But he barely talks about them. There was one experience that happened to Paul that he never stopped talking about. And it wasn't just a memorable experience. It was an experience that wasn't even life-changing. It was an experience that changed everything for Paul. Not just his life in this world, but his life beyond this world. It changed everything for him. And everywhere that he went, Paul spoke about it. it changed everything. It made him a new man. In fact, he would say in his writings... He was a new creation. He was a new creature. It, it wasn't just a, new, a leaf he'd turned over. He wasn't just the same man remodeled. He was a new person. 
Sometimes experiences do change us, don't they? They change our opinion. People's behaviour towards us will change our opinion of them. Sometimes our political persuasions might change due to circumstances that happen. Our opinions change. Well, that happens to all of us at some stage as we develop, as we grow up, as we grow older, as our priorities change. And priorities change too, don't they? Things like illness will change our priorities. Accidents, illness, losing someone close to us will change our priorities. You speak to a lot of people who over the last year their priorities have changed because they spent a lot more time at home with their family and maybe at one time they worked 40, 50, 60 hours a week and never saw their family. Now suddenly they're working similar hours but they're at home a lot more. Maybe you're one of the parents that's sick of being at home and you want to be away out more often. But a lot of people, their priorities have changed and they want to be available to their family more. This experience changed everything. His opinions, his priorities changed everything for, 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 for Paul. It changed his past. His past was something that he looked back upon it. He looked back on it with no pride. He looked back on it with no glory. He looked back on it with shame, but it was forgiven. As he looked at his present, it was irreversibly changed. He couldn't go back to what he was before. And as he looked forward, he looked forward to being in heaven at the end of his life. What happened? Well, in Acts chapter 9, Saul of Tarsus, as he was known then, was a man who was known as a strong in fact, he says it in Acts chapter 26. He was a strong Jew. He was a Pharisee. He was in a sect of the Pharisees. And the Pharisees hated Christianity. They hated the gospel. They hated Jesus. It says at the beginning of Acts chapter 9 that he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the church of Jesus Christ. See, his de determination was to stamp the church out, was to get rid of Christianity forever. And he left Jerusalem to travel to Damascus, and he left angry. His work was being done in Jerusalem. He had people who were imprisoning and, and, and ultimately would murder, slaughter innocent Christians. But he was going down to Damascus with permission to do exactly the same thing. He left Jerusalem with the intention of destroying Christianity down in Damascus, and he arrived in Damascus a Christian. Isn't that amazing? He left Damascus hating the name of Jesus, not wanting to ever hear the name preached again. And on the way to Damascus, he called him Lord. In fact, Philippians, when he writes to Philippians, he would say this, that I may know him. It wasn't enough that he had come into contact with Jesus of Nazareth. He wanted to spend his life knowing him more, knowing him better, finding out more, exploring the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He left hating the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what he called it later on? He called it my gospel. Paul. It was his gospel that he was preaching. What changed? What changed was on that road from Jerusalem to, to, to Damascus, he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. A light at midday, a light Brighter than the noonday sun, he said, shone down from heaven. And in an instant, he realized he was wrong. In an instant, he realized that his life's work had been misguided. His belief 
system was wrong. His efforts to impress God and what he thought was doing the work of God were completely useless because he met Jesus. And it was pretty quick after he fell to the ground with that light shining in his eyes, he knew who it was. He knew partly who it was because he was told who it was. He said, who are you, Lord? And the voice came from heaven. This is the one who had died, who'd been buried, who'd ascended into heaven. He said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. And nothing in Saul of Tarsus' life would ever be the same again because he had met Jesus. What about you? Have you encountered the Lord Jesus Christ? We don't have the same bright lights today that Saul of Tarsus saw. We won't see that. Instead, we have the Bible. We have the Word of God. And that light that shone into Saul of Tarsus and showed him, exposed him for what he was. We don't have that bright physical light now. We have the word of God which is our light. And that light shines into our souls and exposes us for what we are. It exposes us to be sinners before a holy God. It exposes us to be disobedient, rebellious and sinful. Shows us to be those who have no intention of seeking after God at all. In fact, for the most of us, we live our lives as if God isn't even there. And I wonder if you've ever had that encounter of realizing that you're wrong. Of realizing that you're a sinner. We sang that hymn, Suffer a Sinner, who tells, who, who, who's to tell what he knows, loving his Savior. Do you know something? That's what Paul did in Acts chapter 26. He just wanted to tell people. Because he realized not only that he was a sinner, but that Jesus Christ was more than a historical figure that he wanted to stamp out. He is the son of the living God. He was Saul of Tarsus' savior. The man that they had crucified back in the Gospels and, 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 and the man they'd taken outside of Jerusalem and they'd nailed him to a cross. They'd savagely beaten him. He not only is a savior, but he is Lord. I wonder if you, like Saul of Tarsus, have accepted his forgiveness. Nothing would ever be the same again. And Saul of Tarsus would then be so concerned and so eager that everyone else would understand what had happened to him and see the change that had happened in his life and see that it, what he had before, <coughs> he had prospects, he had money, he had popularity. Now he's got none of that. But he has Christ. He has a hope. He has a future. He has a present that is worth living. They wanted him, as he says in verse number 29, Oh, Agrippa says, are you trying to persuade me to be a Christian, Paul? And Paul says, yes, I am. And not only you, Agrippa, I would long that everyone here who's listening would be just like I am. This frail little man who suffered so much in his body. He says, I want you to all be like me because I'm going to heaven. My sins are forgiven. I have met Christ and I want you to as well. If only. If only you could understand. If I could only tell him as I know him. My redeemer who has brightened all my way. If I could tell how precious is his presence. I am sure that you would make him yours today. He's a wonderful savior. Many, many, many millions of people. Have come to, into direct contact with the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the teaching and the preaching of the Apostle Paul, I wonder if you have.
His most memorable day was that encounter on the Damascus Road with Jesus Christ. I was seven years old, living in Australia, just a boy living in Australia. And, and, and I realized what I was, and, and I realized that I needed to be, to be saved. I needed to have my sins forgiven. And I clearly remember, and I would certainly say, the most memorable day of my life was the day that I, I received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I wonder if you can say the same thing. How on earth is that possible? How on earth can someone who's a sinner ever be saved? How can a sinner ever come into contact with Jesus Christ? Well, the man who died on that cross said this, come unto me. And he calls all of us to come. And the apostle, when he was speaking, he, he had so many, so many, many memorable things that he said. One day when a man said to him, sir, what must I do to be saved? You know what he said? Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Acceptance that I am what I am, a sinner. Acceptance that he is what he is, a saviour. And Lord, Jesus Christ, and you'll, be, and you'll be saved. Thank you for listening.